What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Or oh, welcome to your first time here. You know, it seems that everyone I talk to is broke. They're having trouble making ends meet, and they're living paycheck to paycheck because of this inflation. Inflation on food, inflation on energy, and inflation on housing, and a lot of other categories. And unfortunately, people think that it's going to get better. They think it's just a temporary transitory inflation still yet they have hopes that if they can wait it out long enough they can max their credit cards out if they can mortgage their property if they can just keep holding on just a little bit longer that's going to get better and unfortunately that's not the case it's going to continue to get worse and worse because the dollar is crashing it's losing value other nations are dumping the dollar which causes us to lose more value our own federal government keeps printing and printing and printing and it's all designed to steal what little that we do that we have left because inflation is just another way of taxation and people are frustrated people are desperate and they're trying to make ends meet and they're having more and more trouble as time goes on so i decided to make a video today to talk about a few things i think and a few ways that i think that we all can help fight this inflation number one is to by second hand my ex-wife she could not pass by a yard sale and during the summer here there's lots of yard sales and i'm sure that this next summer is coming up this spring and summer and fall there will be even more yard sales because people are going to get desperate and they're going to be trying to sell what they have to get more resources to spend on the things that they need so look for those yard sales and like i said my ex-wife when she would pass by one of those she'd be like and she'd stop and pull in there she couldn't resist stopping because she knew she could find bargains and she often did i remember she found some uh as a new balance sneakers and they were two pair the size that i wear a dollar a piece a dollar a pair so two dollars for two pair and they were just about new she found all kinds of clothing i've found tools books you can go to like I said, stop at yard sales, you can go to flea markets, second-hand stores, and you can find lots and lots of bargains. So don't overlook that, and be sure to take advantage of that resource. There's nothing wrong with second-hand. If it's still good quality, still in good shape, still has usage, you can save 80-90% by buying used. And number two, learn how to repair things. Don't just throw things away. You know, they say we live in a disposable society. You get something, use it for a while, and it breaks, you throw it away and buy something else. But don't think that way. Don't live that way. If you can repair something, repair it. If it breaks, look at this and say, can I fix this? Can I get more usage out of this? Can I recycle this? Get some tools learn some skills and learn to repair things yourself take your vehicle for example the modern vehicles are difficult to learn to repair yourself because of all the electronics and things in those however you can still yet you know change the oil you can still yet change your air filters and things like that do your general maintenance on your vehicle the same thing with your lawn mowers your weed eaters your other tools anything that breaks look at that and say how can i fix this and if you can't fix it think how can i recycle this and make this usable for something else something that it wasn't originally intended for what can i do with this that broke so i can get more usage out of this don't never ever just toss something away without trying to figure out if you can repair it or not or if you can't repair that to use it for something else recycle it for a different usage and number three buy from local farmers if you can go straight to the source to buy your produce and do that lots of farmers if you contact them will sell you things sell you eggs sell you meat will sell you produce right out of the garden and you can save a lot of money that way by cutting out the middleman and you know that it's fresh or you know you can go to farmers markets where farmers set up to sell their produce there's a place up the road here from where i am about 12 miles up the road that actually sells produce and a lot of it comes from the amish and they'll put their produce there to sell their jams or jellies and things like that their apples their potatoes all kinds of produce and home canned goods there for people to pick up and or people to buy and it's great food you can get it cheaper and you know that it's fresher you know it comes from 
local sources, local honey, for example. You can find all kinds of things grown locally, of course, depending on where you are. But try to figure out where everything local, how the growers are locally, contact those people and try to buy directly from those farmers and from those farmers markets. And number four, learn how to forage. Learn about edible plants in your location. Learn about hunting, learn about fishing. Get a rod and reel, get some bait. Learn to fish, learn how to prepare that. Learn how to hunt small game, learn how to trap. Learn how to forage for the plants that grow in your area. Learn how to prepare those. It's a great survival skill. And you can save a lot of money by learning how to forage, how to fish, how to hunt. And number five, raise a garden. You know, if you can't raise a huge garden, if you don't have the room to raise that huge garden, raise a small garden. Get some five gallon buckets, drill some holes in the bottom of those, fill those with some good soil, some sand in the bottom and some good soil at the top. Plant in those, raise, your, raise some tomato plants, whatever you like to eat in those buckets on your balcony if that's all you have. But do that and you can save money, you can gain skills, but raise a big, as big a garden as you possibly can where you are. If you can, start out with the seed. You know, you can go buy the plant already started to sprout and replant that and grow that, but it's more expensive to do that. If you can start out with the seed, it's a whole lot cheaper. You can go buy, you know, a tomato plant that's already a foot tall for three, four, five dollars and plant that, or you can get a seed and plant that, and it's going to cost a whole lot less than that four, five, six dollars that you have to grow it from seed learn how to sprout that but you'll gain that skill so learn how to plant the garden learn how to grow that garden learn how to harvest that produce and learn how to store that you'll save a lot of money and you'll gain a lot of skills and number six separate your needs from your wants think about what you actually need versus what you want what you need is to be warm to be dry to be fed and to be healthy just about everything else is just wants if you can do without something do without it think do i need this or do i just want this and if you can't live without that you want it so badly and you can afford it then go ahead and get that but you need to figure out your needs versus your wants and spend most of your resources or all of your resources on your actual needs instead of just wants unfortunately a lot of people will spend their money that they have set aside for their needs on things they want and they can't supply the things that they need they have no resources to buy the things they need so don't do that separate the two focus on your needs first if you have anything left over then you can satisfy those wants and number seven learn how to cook going out every day and eating out mcdonald's wherever even those fast food restaurants that are supposed to be cheaper adds up over a month's time, over a year's time, into thousands of dollars. If you take your family of four to McDonald's and you each spend $5, that's $20. If you do that several times a week, add it up over a month, over a year, that's going to be a lot of money. I can't figure my head right now, guys, and I wasn't good at math. However, we all know it's going to equal out to be hundreds of dollars during that year that you can save by cooking yourself. And you'll eat better, you'll learn more skills, you'll learn how to cook, you'll learn how to prepare those basic foods. But learn how to cook. And those boxed things you buy in boxes they are not healthy anyway. The microwave things you put in the microwave, not healthy. You can save money by actually cooking with you know your flour, your cornmeal, your beans, your rice fresh meat, fresh produce, learn how to cook and prepare that. You'll be healthier and you'll save money and you'll learn skills. And number eight, learn how to ride a bike. If you can ride that bike from point A to point B, do that. If you're healthy enough, ride that bike. You'll save money on gasoline. You'll save money on wire and tie your vehicle and you'll get healthier. You'll be stronger and you'll feel better about yourself riding that bike. Now you can't ride a bike, you can, but it's not practical to take a bike ride every day on a long trip. But if you live two or three miles from the store, ride that bike to the store and back. If you wanna go visit someone who lives close instead of getting in your vehicle and driving there, get on that bike and ride that bike. And you know, if you can get a hold of one, you can afford one, they're kind of expensive, but they're awesome if you have one, an electric bike 
You can go a lot further, a lot more quickly, and you'll save money in the long run because gasoline cost, wear and tire in your vehicle, you know, tires, brakes, general upkeep, maintenance, and the mileage put on that vehicle, you can save all that by riding a bike. There's no shame in a grown man or a grown woman riding a bike. Be safe about it, watch for traffic, Watch for crazy people on the highway, but ride that bike as much as possible and you'll save a lot of money over a year's time. And you'll help fight this inflation. And number nine, don't heat space in your home that you're not using. Now, if you have rooms that are just for storage and no one is leaving in, you can close that off and not heat that without having the risk of, you know, pipes freezing and things like that. Then close that room off and don't heat that room. Close that door. Roll a blanket up, roll a towel up, and put it under that door to block that air coming from under that door off. Block that room off. Don't heat that room if there's no need to be heating that room. If there's no one in that room, no one's using that room, and if it's not going, like I said, cause your pipes to freeze or anything like that, then block that room off, and you'll save a lot of money by blocking things off inside your home and not heating things. Like my house here, you know, I have this huge basement down here. I have uh, this room here. I have a hallway, another bedroom, another bedroom, a bathroom, and a garage down here in this lower part of the house. However, I heat this part here is all I heat. I don't heat the rest of this. And I've never had any trouble with pipes freezing. Actually, down here in this basement, it stays. Even when it's like 20 degrees outside, it'll be in the 50s down here in this basement. So, no problem with the pipes freezing. And I don't heat this area down here beside this one room. I heat the upstairs because that's where I live at most of the time. Besides when I'm down in here, doing this towards this camera or editing videos but you can save a lot of money by blocking those rooms off those unused rooms off and number 10 is to use heavy curtains over your windows you don't want to block all your windows off with heavy curtains and it be dark you want to let some light in but if you have some windows that you can block off with heavy curtains to block some of that wind out and if it's wind coming through and it always is through windows because they're not energy efficient you have glass and that's really pretty much it so you can block those off with that heavy with those heavy curtains heavy blankets you can put plastic over those and staple that around your windows or seal that some other way around your windows and you'll save a lot of energy cost because those windows let a lot of cold air in and will let a lot of your warm air out if you can have your home better insulated like when i bought this property here i had the attic blown full of insulation it was already insulated good already the guy said and i looked at it myself and it was however i put more in i had insulation sprayed in on the top floor to save energy cost so look what you can do at your home to block off any cold air coming in and warm air coming out and like i said Blocking those windows off with plastic, covering those windows with plastic, using heavy curtains, blankets hung over those windows, or some of those windows will go a long way in saving money and fighting inflation on energy. Anyways, if you have any other ideas, leave those in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'm going to create more out of here, and I'll see you all in the next video, hopefully.